Guys, I went out to Olympic camp. I collected some footage, and on top of the high-level wrestling and the athlete, there's also some great stories, starting with this one. If you take a look here, this is actually two guys working out, Nick Wisdowski, Gable Stevens. This is the final wrestle-off. The way the final wrestle-off works for wrestling, you work your way all season long until you're finally down to two guys. You then do the best of three. You gotta win two out of three. This was the final wrestle-off. Gwiz is a two-time world bronze medalist. Gable is a two-time world champion in the age group level, has now made the Olympic team, but now these guys come together. It's about Team USA, it's about coming together, and USA Wrestling subscribes to a modern, oh, okay, what, what, right here. You see Yanni on a shot, he's wrestling Joel McKenna. That is a workout that also happens to be a rematch of the NCAA Finals. And USA Wrestling subscribes to one theory as it pertains to training and philosophy, which is simply iron sharpens iron. I'm like, maybe you're Watch these two guys work together. What they're doing here is called drilling. This is just where you're practicing your holds, okay? The guy who's on offense. Offense means the guy that's gonna get to the other one's legs and end up on top. His partner is offering him what's called a look, meaning he's in a stance. He's going to look like a wrestler, look like it's competition, but he's not gonna offer defense. He's gonna make sure that if you're the one doing the drill that you look good, that you have success. Good partners will do what I just described. That's what these two are doing. Every now and then you run in with not a good partner. By the way, I talk about this as a workout of a rematch of the NCAA Finals. This is also a workout of the semifinals of the Olympic Trials. Now we go right to the, the two best. Jordan Burroughs is on your left, Olympic champion. Five-time world champion, Kyle Schneider is his workout partner. Kyle's got his knee wrapped there. For reference, he's an Olympic champion three-time world champion. These guys are separated by two weight classes, but either way, in a workout room, you have Olympic champion with Olympic champion. And a lot of what this camp is, as you go through this video, it's not just hard work and getting sweaty t-shirts. It's the sharing of techniques and philosophies. And that's what you're really seeing these two gold medalists doing in this clip. Excuse me. None of that. Seen glad. Seen glad. Seen glad. Okay. Okay. Seriously. This is once in a lifetime, guys. You are not going to see Jordan Burroughs and Kyle Schneider working out anywhere. They're separated by two weight classes. Schneider's getting ready for the Olympic Games. Burroughs getting ready for the world trials and ultimately the world championships will, will be this winter. This is the only time you're gonna see these two Olympic champions sharing technique Blue, and knowledge. Stop. stop, Blue. Up. This guy off me, right? Yeah. Yeah, what's up, bro? How are you, my friend? Well, hello back, Jordan. Yeah, good to see you too. My list of current athletes. I have number one in the world is Simone Biles. I have Jordan Burroughs at number two. And I go back and forth, by the way. Many times, many days I have Jordan Burroughs number one. Just in case you guys are not familiar with Jordan Burroughs. And I'm not talking wrestler, I'm talking athlete. I believe Jordan Burroughs to be one of the top two athletes alive. Not. Skill, explosiveness, mental toughness, work to ethic, gut. experience, Open. desire, get it. Blue. flexibility, Open. strength. I mean, you go right up. Go through all the buzzwords. You throw a buzzword out there, I'll put it in the Jordan Burroughs column. And this is back to Gable and Gwiz. Gable is a protege of Brock Lesnar. Gable's a national champion at the heavyweight class for the University of Minnesota, exactly like Brock Lesnar. When Brock was considering his MMA comeback. I believe it got cut short due to his 
USADA violation. But Brock was going in and working out with Gable, just to put in perspective for you. Many people believe Gable is going to go on and be in the entertainment business. That, if that's that true, that. you're 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 looking that, at the guy that's going to have the same belt that so Hulk Hogan be, once held. So you don't even have to do that. Now here again, where we talk about technique, this is Jordan Burroughs, the Olympic champion, working out with Schneider, the world champion, and they're being coached yep, right there. by the 2006 yeah, there, world gonna be, champion that's gonna be to express for you the knowledge. I don't I want to interrupt while they're talking, you young wrestlers trying to listen. Anyway, but to express the knowledge, try to put this into an MMA perspective. When's the last time you saw Khabib? Put it in perspective. This is Khabib working out with Kamara Usman, being coached by George St. Pierre. Jaden Cox, two time world champion, he's working out with Gadsden here, NCAA champion of Iowa State. So you. You do it. You do it naturally, though. You like if someone shoots you, you check them and stuff. Like, yeah. I just don't do it like I just yeah. Palm it. But it's the same, you know. Yeah. Both of these guys on their own paths right now. Talk about a man on a mission. That's Jaden Cox. Gadsden is a guy in pursuit of a dream. Jaden Cox is out for scorched earth. You guys are wrestling fans. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. If, if you're going and you're down blocking, just like a regular down block, right? Be yeah. quiet. I want you to be able to hear. You be able to hear as they discuss these techniques. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm discussing this angle and the guys. importance. If you're down blocking in, so you shoot. Just a little bit of Yeah, you know? Because then it makes them think maybe a little bit more about that attack right. that they're going to take. NCAA champion in Gadsden. NCAA champions don't have a lot of people they can go get knowledge and advice from. You know what I'm saying? Unless you it's happen to be working out with the world to give them their champion. Their process, right? so, the importance of showing up to this camp. It was a very elitist like camp. It was invite right. only. National team or better. But there's nowhere better you could be if you're an aspiring wrestler. Oh, that was nice by Gatson. Don't fire me. And you see when these wrestlers are working, if you're a young wrestler, see how their hands are never in one spot. See how their hands are always moving. See how their feet are always moving. They're going at a very slow pace here. They're visiting, they're talking, they're learning. You notice their knees are always bent. Their head is always up. Their hands are never stagnant and their feet are always in motion. Very similar characteristics for what you see in great fighters. All right, now this is Mike Gray. This is one of the great technicians. I should not address him common as Mike. That is Coach Gray. One day after this camp concluded, Coach Gray became the head coach of Cornell University. A perennial top 10 team. He is now at the helm. He was the assistant. He's been there for years. He was a wrestler for them, but he is now the boss. It's a very big deal what Coach Gray is showing them here. If you have one leg instead of rushing in to get to the body or to get to the second leg, post. Post on the armpit so that you see how he posts that armpit? That's so his opponent can't turn in. You get one leg, you can create a real scramble with high-level wrestlers. They can start to circle in, grab your leg, entangle you, get a stalemate, and collegiate, they'll start rolling under. Coach Gray shutting all that down by just posting on the armpit. Stops that motion. Allows you to secure your takedown. Joey's in, reach Rex, head outside, switches to a double. I know you young wrestlers are watching this. I know, I know you're drooling in the mouth what great technique this is, but notice the little stuff. Notice, even when they're drilling, notice their feet. They never stop. It can be an inch, it can be two inches, but their feet never stop moving. Their hands never grab something and stop. They're moving. Now this is Lee Kemp. Lee Kemp is a three-time, three-time, I said three-time, world champion. He was an Olympian in 1980, that of course being the year that we boycott. Low head behind the Would have been the Olympic champion. Lee Kemp, to put in perspective for you, time and era, but has wins over Dan Gable. 
I know that's a name that even the commons will understand. I'm going to lay out here for a second. I want you to hear what they're talking about. I'm trying to get through it. I feel like I almost need to either pull him relieve some of the pressure. And the way you get a scoop, you're right. Scoop knees back underneath you. I know what you By the way, guys, Lee Kemp, he's the one in on the leg here. He's the coach showing this technique. He retired in 1980. You do the math. I don't know how old that man is. How do you go away from this? But that's got to be one of the most fit men I've ever seen that ended an athletic career 31 years ago. If he stays over me, like, if he stays really tight, or if he locks his hands, something like that, I come... See, he dropped off that way, or he could go that way, but I don't care. I think I can. I think I'm in a good position here, yeah. and I'm flat on my ankles here. You're forcing him up too, because when you're, when you're you're forcing that far leg up off the mat. Yeah, I've scooted a lot. But yeah. I, like if I get your leg, you can feel that from here. Well, Lee Kemp is largely talking about elevation right here. He's showing some of the fundamentals. But if you're ever in a scramble situation, it's very true for MMA as well. Whoever's head is higher is winning. So if you come underneath a guy, you, you now know your objective. I need to get my head above his. Question becomes, I can do Watch Kyle Snyder, guys. Watch Kyle Snyder. He wasn't getting attention, and he didn't want to waste any time. He didn't want to waste any time. He just goes into shadow wrestling. This is one of my favorite parts of the entire camp right there. Ten crazy. Strength and honor on three. One, two, three. Strength and honor. Notice how the boys wrap up. You go into combat, you shake everyone's hand when you're done, you walk away. Yeah. All right. That sounds good. Kyle Schneider, who was the last one you saw in that scene there, he was the one drilling with Jordan Burroughs, but he seated number three for the Olympic Games. It is common belief, including by me, he will be in the finals against Sajalayev, who is a Russian. Now, they call him the Russian tank, Sajalayev. Sajalayev won the last Olympic Games, and he technical falled his opponent in the finals. Put that in perspective for you. A technical fall in wrestling would be equivalent to the mercy rule in baseball. Mercy rule is when one team gets so damn much ahead, the umpire just stops the game. Just stop it. Mercy. You, you can't come back. You're only going to get humiliated. Everybody head out, head out for pizza and sodas. We're done here. That's what a technical fall is. You get so many points ahead that the ref just says we're done. There is no realistic scenario where you can possibly come back. I will save you the embarrassment. Sajalayev did that in the Olympic finals. Now, before you think, oh, Kyle's outmatched, Kyle happens to be an Olympic champion. These two were in different weight classes, okay? 2012, they were in different weight classes. I apologize, 2016, they were in different weight classes. They now are going to meet, and that's happened twice already during the last quadrennium. Once in the World Finals, Kyle Schneider won. Once in the World Finals, Sajalayev won. So if this match can come to fruition, and when it's a tournament, you can't promise anything. It's one of the reasons promoting wrestling is hard, because you don't know what match you're promising. You're promising a whole bunch of guys. That will be, if that happens, that will be the biggest match that wrestling, the UWW, that's the UFC of wrestling, that is our governing body, that will be the biggest match that UWW can sanction. Appreciate you watching. More to come.